Let's again open our Bibles and study the precious Word of God. Nehemiah chapter 7. We have already been longer in Nehemiah 7 than I would have anticipated. It is a long chapter, granted, but it is a chapter with so many names. In Bible terms, it's called a genealogy. And uh, what can possibly be found of nourishment, practicality in Bible names? And honestly, class, I am surprised at what the Holy Spirit has shown us. Uh, the Bible truths that in my life personally, I've been able to draw from Nehemiah chapter 7. Again tonight, I have chosen a wider path of scripture, a text, a lesson subject that has more verses than normal. Nehemiah 7, 39, listen to this, 39 through 60. Verses 39 through 60. And there's a reason for this. There is order in this chapter of names. Holy Spirit directed and written organization to the chapter. These verses, 39 through 60, seem to deal with those who have returned from Babylon, those who are dedicated to the service of God. I want to change a word. Dedicated to the service of God in this sense, working at the temple. The temple that has been rebuilt there in Jerusalem. Often called Zerubbabel's temple because he's the man that spearheaded the work. Nehemiah 7, 39 through 60. Uh, may I say this? And I, it's just by way of reminder this chapter parallels, is very similar to Ezra chapter number two, where Ezra records, a, gives us a register of the Jews who had the faith and the courage to lead Babylon. It had been homeland for 70 plus years to lead Babylon and come back to the undeveloped, under enemy attacked land of Judea, city of Jerusalem. Again, these verses deal with the workers at the temple. Now, let me try to show you what I mean. Look at verse number 39. The priests. I mean, that's the first, uh, the second word uh, in the verse. It's the first noun in the verse. The priests. Here are the priests that came back home to Jerusalem and uh, they will be qualified to minister and serve God, as I said, in the temple. I'll read you verse 39. And the priests, get ready now, uh, there will be a list. The children of Jediah of the house of Jeshua, 900 73 from that family among the priests returned to Jerusalem. Uh, that word, uh, Jediah, it's Yada and Yah. Y-A-D-A -A and then Y-A-H. And it means God, Jehovah, God knows. God knows Jediah. What a beautiful name for a priest. Verse 40, the priests continue. The children of Emmer, Emmer, a thousand fifty and two. Preacher, this is going to be boring. Oh no, no, don't don't take that attitude yet. Uh, Emmer, let me tell you what Emmer means. It comes from the Hebrew verb Amar, A M A R, and it means to speak, to talk. Maybe Emmer is a good testimony, a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse. 41, the children of Pasher, 1,200, 
forty. Let me see, I, I misread it. A thousand two hundred and forty-seven. And then the children of Haram means dedicated. A thousand and seventeen. We begin our long paragraph with the listing of the priests who return. And that's verses 39 through 42. Now, I'd like to say something about the priests who have returned. Number one. These priests are absolutely necessary for Old Testament worship. Uh, it, is, it would be the priests who will receive the burnt offering, the little lamb. Or if it's a very poor Jew wanting to come worship God, confess, get his sins covered, he could bring a little dove. If it's a rather well-to-do Jew and he wants to give God a superb offering, it'll be an ox. A bullock, if you will. You can't worship God without that priest being the, listen to this word, the go-between. Listen to this word, the mediator between the sinner and Almighty God. There is no Old Testament worship without the priest. The sinner, the erring Jew, cannot go into the presence of God in the Old Testament. In fact, there's a curtain, there's a veil, there, there's more than one uh, that separates him from the direct presence of God. Why? The veil is in place. Jesus has not come. The blood of the lamb has not been shed. They did not have direct access to God. They had to have a priest. Can I say something? I hope I'm about to hear a hallelujah in the New Testament. I don't need a professional priest. I don't need a so-called clergyman. I, I, I don't need a bishop. I, I don't need an overseer. I can go directly into the presence of Almighty God. I'm invited to come boldly before the throne of grace. Hebrews chapter 4 uh, in, in, invites me. Why? Because when Jesus died on the old rugged cross, shed his blood, as he was dying, as he was saying, it is finished, the veil of the temple ripped, rent in twain, and lost sinner, because of the blood of Jesus, now has access. That's why I pray in Jesus' name, has access, access to the very throne of an almighty God. Now, every believer is a priest. Not so in the Old Testament. These men had to come back. They had to, but now I'm a priest and you're a priest. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter three, verse number one. I'm a priest. I'm a, Revelation tells me I in Christ Jesus will be a king. I'll co-rule with him on this earth in the millennium, but I'm also a priest. Hallelujah to an almighty God. Where's that come boldly to the throne of grace, preacher? Hebrews 4, 16. Where's that verse? The veil of the temple is rent in twain. Matthew 27, 51. All right, preacher, if we're priests, what about that idea of a high priest? Oh, oh, we still have a high priest. We still have a great high priest who represents us in and who is that? Hebrews chapter three, verse number one. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, you've been saved. Consider the high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Consider the high priest of our profession, of our faith, Christ Christ. Jesus, the Lord. We could go back to Exodus chapter 8. I'm not going to take the time too much to cover. Uh, verses 15 through 20. We, you will learn there was a shortage of uh, workers for the temple. And, and Ezra had to, had to ask especially for workers for the temple. Oh my, in this day in which we live. We ought to thank God for our pastors. Thank God for our missionaries. Thank God for the evangelists and the Sunday school teachers and, and, and the deacons and, and the faithful people of God who serve God with all of their heart. The priests, and we had a list of them who returned to serve Almighty God. Uh, we need to read verse number 43. We've gotten that far. The Levites... The Levites, the children of Jeshua, 
of Kadmiel, of the children of Hudagah, 74. 74 Levites returned. And uh, particularly the Levites, they need more Levites. That carries you back, as I mentioned, to Ezra chapter 8, if you want to pursue uh, that line of study. Preacher, who are the Levites? All right, here's my answer. The Levites are assistants, helpers to the priests. Uh, the priests can't do it all. They're involved in the shedding of blood. They're involved in the burning of the animal on the altar. Uh, they're involved in the direct relationship between man and God. They have to have some help. And the Levites enter in. They derive, they descend from uh, the man of God, Levi. Uh, one of the tribes of Israel, the Levite. Levi means to join together. Aren't you glad you were a sinner on your way? When you were a sinner on your way to hell, aren't you glad the Holy Ghost came and got you, brought you to the foot of the cross and joined us together with our Savior? That's what Levi means. You say, preacher, you got any scripture on the Levites? Numbers chapter one, beginning about verse 50 and going down through verse number 53. The jobs and the duties of the Levites. I'll read a little bit of it. Moses appoint Levites over the tabernacle, God's house of the testimony, over the vessels and all the things that belong to it. The pieces of furniture, candlestick, table of bread, the pieces of furniture. Uh, they shall bear the tabernacle and the vessels thereof and minister unto it. And then at night, they are to camp around the tabernacle. The Levites are helpers. Get that word. They are helpers to the priest of these Old Testament days. And we need helpers for the men of God. Genesis chapter 46, verse 11 gives us the three divisions. Am I going into too much detail? The three divisions of the Levites. And the sons of Levi are Gershom, Kohath, and Merari, the three sons. And the Levites were divided into the Kohathites, the Merarites, and then, of course, uh, the Merari, the sons of Merari. And each had different job. Uh, if you were with Gershom, you would carry the fabrics, the coverings of the tabernacle and the curtain and the wall that surrounded. If you were Marari, it, it's all in the Bible. You were carrying the hardware for the tents, the curtains, the, uh, or the, the walls and the posts and the and, and, and then, of course, the Kohathites, uh, uh, they would carry everything by hand because they're transplanting the they're transporting the holy furniture of the tabernacle. My my my, how detail the need for the Levites. Can I spiritualize that truth just for a moment? Are you helping your preacher at church? Are are, are, are you being an assistant in any way possible, preacher? I don't know how. In the world, I would do that. Are you on your knees every night, uh, every morning, praying for the man of God that stands in that pulpit, pulpit where I'm preaching revival this week, by the way, stands in that pulpit and feeds the congregation from the precious word of an almighty God? Are you praying for assistance, helpers? Anyway, preacher, uh, there's that hospital visit. Your back's been paining you. Can I make that visit for you? Uh, can I pray uh, with that family uh, in, in your stead? You can call them, but can I go do that and take that load off you? The ministry of the Levites. Verse number 44. I want to read it to you. The singers. Now, class, are you seeing how this paragraph developed? The priest, they work at God's house. The Levites, they worked at God's house. The singers, they worked. They served at God's house. Uh, the singers, the children of Asaph, A-S-A-P-H, it means the gatherer. He gathered songs. He gathered the music. 
He, he, he gathered the other points of worship uh, in, in music for the children of Israel. He's a gatherer, 148 of the singers came back from Babylon. That word for singers is sheer. S-H-I-Y-R, pronounced sheer. And get this, this is what it means, to travel. Pretty sure that doesn't make any sense. You just told me there's singers down at the temple, down at the uh, uh, Zerubbabel's temple. And, and uh, to travel, it means they had a song in their heart at the temple, at their homes, on the way from to work, on the way home from work, to travel. Everywhere they go, they've got a song in their heart. Glory to God. Now in Babylon, not so much singing. Psalm 137 verse 1, when we were in Babylon, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and we wept. Not a lot of singing. We wept when we remembered Zion, where we had been, how we've sinned. We hung our harps, no singing, no playing, no music. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. No singing in back, but now they're back in the Holy Land. Now they're back serving God, and there's joy on faith. There's a song down in there. Thank God for the singers. Paul implies if the Holy Ghost lives in us, we will sing with joy in our uh, hymns and songs and spiritual songs, and, uh, uh, psalms, P S A L S, singing, making. Glory in our heart, joy in our heart unto the Lord. That's verse 44. Verse 45, let's look at it. Uh, the Nethanims, the children of, I don't think I read all of verse 30, of uh, verse 45. No, I, I'm getting mixed up in my numbers. Verse number 45. I did read all of verse 44. 45. I had skipped to 46 in my Bible. I don't know how I did that. The porters, the children of Shalom, the children of Ater, the children of Talmud. Y'all can read it as well as I can. The children of Akab, the children of Hatita, the children of Shobai, 138. By the way, that word Akab, A-K-K-U-B. Hey, listen to it. Akab. See if it sounds like Jacob, Akab, Jacob, it is associated, it is linked, it's cognate with the name for Jacob, and it means supplanter, one who wants to pull you out of the way and take your place. That's what Jacob was when God first met him. But he ended up being Israel, the prince of God. That's what the Holy Spirit can do in a life, can change you from a crook to a saint. Hallelujah to God. Uh, and preacher, can you tell me something about these porters? Two times. Two times. Now, this is in the King James Bible in our Old Testament. Two times that word for porters is translated doorkeepers. Doorkeepers. Being a doorkeeper, if you will, at the house of an almighty God. And it lists the doorkeepers. They're going to come back and open and shut the door at this church. It, they've done it for years. The gentleman who did it for a decade or two passed away. He's with the Lord. There's a new crop of gentlemen every night when I arrive for the revival. Tried to get here a little early last night to greet the visitors and, and tell them what our text is going to be. I like to do that. And, and, uh, and there's always a porter. There's always a doorkeeper. And he opened the door. Hey, preacher, good to see you tonight. Come on in the building. Doorkeepers. You say, preacher, is that mentioned in the Bible? Psalm 84, I think it's verse 10. Lord, a day in your courts, a day at your house is better than a thousand. Lord, I'd rather spend a day at church than a thousand uh, days at the amusement park, uh, than a thousand days on, on the picnic ground. God, a day in your house is so sweet. So I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the biggest tent the wicked men own and possess uh, with all their lavish trade. I'd rather be a doorkeeper down at God's house. 
I'd rather clean the bathroom at God's house uh, uh, than uh, I'll do it. I, I, I'd rather, whatever I can just let me, I'll take the low, I'll be a doorkeeper at God's house. Preacher, is that doorkeeper I did mention in the New Testament? Listen to Jesus. John chapter 10. It's the first paragraph. I don't know that I'll have time to read it up. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, he's sneaking in. He's a, he climbs up some other way. He's a thief and he's a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the shepherd, the porter, that's the doorkeeper. The porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his sheep by name and he leads them out. There is a porter, there's a doorkeeper in Jesus' teaching in John chapter 10. And of course, there's always the question, who is that porter? Could be the Holy Ghost, could be God the Father. There are different ideas, but my point, there is a porter. There is a doorkeeper in Jesus' teaching there. When Peter got out of jail, Herod's going to kill him tomorrow in Acts chapter 12. Uh, he didn't know where to go. He said, I'll go to Mary's house. I'll go to John Mark's mother's house. And, and he went there and he knocked on the door and they came. Uh, Peter knocked at the door of the gate, Acts 12, 13. And a damsel, a young lady came to hearken. Her name was Rhoda. That means Rose. Her name was Rhoda. And she's the one that'll open the door. She knew Peter's voice. And uh, eventually, Peter got doorkeepers, even in the book of Acts. Do something at God's house. Well, preacher, I, I just uncluttered the pews after the service. Do something at God's house. Well, preacher, I just look around uh, when the Service is over, and if it's a little piece of uh, gum wrapper, uh, there's a, a tissue of that, I'll just pick it up on my way out and drop it in the trash or say, be a doorkeeper. Do something down at God's house. Verse number 46. We're going to have to hurry. The Nethanims, the Nethanims, uh, the children of Ziha, the children of Heshuppah, uh, the children of Tabioth, the children of Keros, the children of Siah, it means to meditate, to think. Uh, the children of Padon, it means ransom. I'm glad I'm ransomed by the blood of Jesus. The children of Lebana, the children of Hagban, uh, Hagaba, uh, the children of Shelma, uh, the Nethanims. Uh, but it goes on to verse 49 through 51. The children of Hanan, the children of Gedah. Hanan means mercy. Our grace, uh, the children of Riah, the children of Rezin, the children of Nakoda, the children of Gezim, the children of Uzzah, it means strong, strength, uh, uh, the children of Pasia, uh, uh, the children of Besai, we're, we're getting the verse, all these are among the Nethanims, the children of Menuhim, the children of Nephesheim, it means scattered Spices. Uh, uh, boy, I want to live a life that smells good. I, I want to live a life that, I want to scatter the fragrance of the good Holy Ghost everywhere I go. The children of Back, uh, back uh, the children of uh, uh, Cuba, uh, the children of Har Har, the children of Basileth, the children of Mahiah, I'm just reading, the children of Harsha, it means silent. There's a time to be silent. At church, be still and know uh, that I am God. The children of Barkos, the children of Sisera, battle array. Put on the whole armor of God. The children of Tama, the children of Nezia. It means to excel. I want to excel. I want to be the best I can for Jesus. The, the children of Hatifa, Hatifa, it means caught. Seized. I want to be caught by the Holy Ghost. I want to be seized and possessed uh, by the good. And these are the Nethanims. Preacher, who in the world are the Nethanims? Quickly. The word Nethanim, it, it's Natan, N-A-T-H-A-N. Uh, it is a Hebrew verb that means to give. These are servants God gave to the Levites to help them with the work at the house of God. Watch this. They're the priests. Priests have got some helpers called Levites. And now the Levites have got some helpers called the Nethanims. The Nethanims. Preacher, who are they? Joshua 9, 21, 9, 23. Again in 9, 27. Uh, uh, 
labels them their Gibeonites there. I think they eventually become the Nethanims, uh, hewers of wood and drawers of water. They'll chop up the wood uh, uh, that will be used uh, uh, at the temple. Uh, uh, offerings, burning offerings. Uh, uh, they'll draw the water that is that maybe for the labor at, at, at the temple. They are temple servants that are serving those. It means set apart, given to God. They're doing the menial work, uh, uh, the, the heavy labor down at God's house. Uh, the Gibeonites, as I said, Joshua 9, seem to be linked to these people. They were assigned to help the living. I see all the way through this text. And they helped them. And they helped them. And they helped them. Oh, to be helpers. Oh, to be exhorters and encouragers in the things of God. Let me give you one more, if I can. Let me give you one more quick thought about the Nethanims, those that are given to serve, those that are even in spiritual gifts. In Romans chapter 12, there are the servers. Uh, there are those that do what they uh, are given to ministry, to serving, to helping others. God raised up a bunch of servers in this day. Uh, we don't need, uh, thank God for leadership, but thank God for fellowship and, and uh, servers. The idea, here's the word, of being an armor bearer. Preacher, what in the world does that mean? Being an armor bearer. It is used, the word armor bearer is used 18 times in the Old Testament. What is it? Here's the warrior. Here's the captain. Or for that matter, here's the prince, Jonathan, uh, son of King Saul. He had an armor bearer. And uh, I'll carry your armor. You let me know when you need it and I'll have it ready for you. Uh, and, and Jonathan's armor bearer, when Jonathan was taking on an enemy army single-handed, Jonathan's armor bearer said, I'll go with you. I'll join in the fight with you, Jonathan. And they, by God's grace and God's fact, they won a great victory. Somebody consider becoming an armor bearer for your pastor. Somebody consider becoming an armor bearer for that missionary God has laid on your heart. Preacher, what do you mean? Pray for him. Give to him when you can. Uh, if you see a burden on your pastor, try to lift it if you can. If you see he's laboring under a heavy load, pray for him extra. Miss a meal or two. Fast and pray. Be an armor bearer for those in God's service. Many a missionary has no armor bearer. No prayer warrior. Take it up. Take it. Ask God to leap. Take it up. For then... I think I've read down through verse 57. And the children of Solomon's servants. That's the last group dedicated to the service of the house of God. The children of Solomon's servants. And they are uh, Sotai, the children of Sophereth means to write. Every one of us is writing a book, our testimony by the life we live. The children of Peridah, the children of Jala, uh, the children of Darkon, the children of Gidel means great. Be a great Christian. Uh, the children of Shephiah, the children of Hatto, the children of Prochoreth and Zabiam, and the children of Ammon. And uh, all of the preacher who are Solomon's servants. Who are they? This is beautiful. They are helpers to the Nethanims. It is believed they are helpers to everybody's got a helper. Everybody needs some help. Everybody can be a help. Uh, uh, these folks are helping me, but I can help the one uh, to whom I am uh, given opportunity to serve. They were probably inferior. Here's a note to the Nethanims, children of Solomon's servants. Uh, they are generally associated with them. They may have even been Canaanite converts to our Lord who were serving and doing all they could for the. Sounds to me like there's a lot of work to be done at God's house. And there's a lot of work for us to help our brothers and sisters grow in Christ as well. And then the last verse and all the Nethanims, all the children of Solomon said, Adam up. 392. And doesn't that scream out, we need more helpers? We need more servants? We don't need pew warmers. We need some folks to get involved serving Almighty God. Why? For the perfect, Ephesians 4.12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work 
of the ministry, helping saints grow, serving in the ministry for the edifying. That means the build up of the body of Christ. Be a helper. Be a servant. Ask God, what can I do to further your cause today? Thank 